I believe the biggest block for you, if you're not hitting 10K months and you identify with this block, this is gonna be probably your reason why. Hi everyone, welcome back or welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Alyssa Cotton and I'm a money mindset expert for female entrepreneurs. And in today's YouTube video, I'm gonna be going over the five common money beliefs that are blocking or even preventing you from scaling to those 10K months. I know this all too well. These were some of the same money blocks I struggled when I was trying to scale my business to consistent 10K months. And I'm gonna be going over the five most common and stay tuned to number five because that one is a game changer. Again, these are the negative money beliefs that are blocking or even preventing you from scaling to 10K months. If that's something you wanna see, stay till the end to learn the five money beliefs that you can work on right away to help your business and your mindset scale to 10K months. Let's get started. The first one is a lack mindset or even a scarcity mindset. Thinking the glass is half empty or there's not enough clients to buy your products or your services or even interact with your business. When we see the world as half empty or that there's not enough to go around, we tend to have this really negative energy and people are tend to be really repelled by it because when we're stuck in the scarcity energy, what happens is we feel desperate. Like I need to make sales because I need to pay my bills or I need to make enough money to hire that employee or X, Y, Z. And when we have this scarcity mindset that there's not enough to go around, or when we start to get triggered, when we see other people in the same niche start to be successful, maybe when they started after you and they start to be successful, Successful, or if you see your friend or someone you know online and they're like just secured another client and you start to notice that scarcity of like man they sold that client that I could have had or why is that client working with them when my products or services are less than the other person so that scarcity mindset what it's actually doing it's actually filtering your brain and it's putting these blinders on your brain from preventing you to see opportunities or abundance so on your journey to scale into those 10K months, it's so important that you identify where do you feel scarcity or lack in your business or even your personal life and how can you start to release that? My favorite ways to release limiting beliefs or negative money beliefs are EFT tapping or EMDR. And I'm trained in both of them and you can definitely learn more. I've got so many videos on EFT tapping and EMDR to help you jumpstart your journey. Number two is one that I hear so frequently, even without being an entrepreneur, I hear this commonly known throughout the money industry. And that is money is the root of all evil. Here's a thing for you to think about. If I were to have a brick, right? We use bricks to make walls. We use bricks to make houses. And now let's say I use this brick and I throw it at you. Does that make the brick evil? Does that make all bricks evil? Or does it mean the person behind throwing the brick maybe had ill intentions? Money itself is not evil. Yes, people have done a lot of evil in order to receive money, but money itself is not either positive or negative. It's really just a neutral experience. And when we think about money at its core, how often are we actually holding money or exchanging money? A lot of it is just numbers exchanging from our credit card to our debit card to a bank account. It's really just like a flow chart of money moving unless you totally lived in just a cash society, which I know so many businesses are no longer accepting cash to protect themselves from people trying to break in and get to the cash register and say, give me your money. It was interesting, I saw this TikTok recently where there was like a break-in and the person was like, give me all your money. And the guy looked at him and said, we only accept credit cards. And the guy literally looked so defeated. I've never seen a robber so defeated. He put his shoulders down, he put his head down and he walked out as if like, oh yeah, nobody is dealing with cash anymore. So money itself is not evil. And if you have a belief that money is evil, again, your brain is going to filter and doesn't want you to receive more money because the brain believes money is evil. So some things that you can do to start rewiring that is looking for evidence in why money is safe, why money is healthy, and why money helps the world do good. So that's the second one is money belief is that money is the root of all evil. Money belief number three that's going to prevent you from hitting those 10K months 
You have to work really hard in order to earn more money. This is a common belief that I hear over and over and over. I just gotta work harder. Maybe I just need to work more, I need to work harder, I need to post more content, I need to work harder. And in reality, when you are truly in alignment, when your inner compass points north, it's not about working harder, it's about working in alignment. And what I mean about working in alignment is learning about your gifts and your talents and leaning into that. So if you're super creative or you really enjoy posting content, lean into that. Or if you're really good at making connections with people, focus on making connections with people. Find your superpower and lean into that and have fun with that. And I can guarantee you're gonna scale to those 10K months. But if you have this limiting belief that you have to constantly work harder and harder and harder in order to scale, that again is going to hold you back. I have worked with multi-millionaires and all of them have said, I actually didn't work harder to get to the multi-million mark. And I'm like, wait, you did it? And they were like, no, I just worked smarter or I leaned into my gifts and talents or I outsourced. And yes, you're thinking, okay, well they had the money to do that. But 99% of entrepreneurs don't have startups. They have to figure it out kind of like that grassroots. And so as you're asking yourself, okay, where am I in my business? Do I feel the need to work harder? And how can I release that limiting belief so that I can be in alignment with my superpower and kind of get into a state of flow? Number four is so common, especially anywhere you go. And really, it's not really, um, it's really taboo to talk about this outside of like entrepreneurship, but this identity that you're not allowed to talk about money, that it's in poor taste to share your income reports, or you look like you're bragging if you share like just hit my 10K months or just hit my huge milestone months. And we have this society cultural identity that it's not safe to talk about how much we make or how much we earn. And I really believe that that was rooted in like the corporate world because I don't think like the head, the head honchos wanted all the employees to know how much everyone was making. And I'll never forget when I first got my first job out of grad school and I was working at with a master's level. They were all like, don't talk about how much you make, don't talk about how much you make. And I was talking to my case manager who was on my team and she told me how much she makes and I told her how much I made and I only made an, a dollar more an hour than her. And there was nothing against her, but my position required a master's degree, which is seven years post high school. And her degree only required, her position only required a GED. And so we started talking and then I remember talking to my supervisor saying, this seems very interesting that this position requires a master's yet I'm only getting paid a dollar more an hour, which only ends up being $2,000 more an hour. And so I really think that the head honchos want this identity of it's not safe to talk about money because they're afraid if we talk about money, then what happens if we ask for more money and they don't wanna give us more money? Anyways, that was a long tangent, but I really believe talking about money should be as simple as what you wanna eat for dinner. Yes, sometimes we say, what do you want for dinner? I don't know, I don't know. But we can make it normalized to talk about money. My friends and I all started really normalizing this conversation of how much do you make? How much do you earn? And it became this really safe space of no longer being like, oh my gosh, you make that much money. And it became, oh my gosh, I'm so proud of you for hitting that milestone. I know how hard you work for that. And I know how important this goal was for you. And see how we can flip the script to instead of shaming each other for making more money, we can celebrate and embrace each other. So again, this taboo that you're not allowed to talk about money. And as an entrepreneur, money is everything. Money is going to allow you to scale. Money is going to allow you to hire more people. And money is going to give you more resources so that way you can keep showing up and being the true authentic self in your business. Okay, number five is I believe the biggest block for you, if you're not hitting 10K months and you identify with this block, this is gonna be probably your reason why. Number five money block that's preventing you from scaling to 10K months is that rich people are greedy or unethical. I hear this so often that wealthy people had to scam their way to the top or wealthy people are selfish and greedy. All they think about is themselves. And when I think about the people in my life who I would consider are wealthy are some of the most generous people I've ever met. 
So think about you, if you have that belief that wealthy people are greedy or unethical, who comes to mind when you think about that? Is that a celebrity or is it somebody you actually know? If it's a celebrity, that's super easy. We can do a cord cutting meditation and release that identity. But if it's someone you know, I really suggest working with a money mindset coach on someone that you can release that attachment and release that person's negative relationship with money or how they got money. So that way you can reclaim your beliefs in your identity. Again, EFT and EMDR are going to be your superpower to rewiring your brain. So when we do EFT tapping, which is emotional freedom technique, we tap on our meridian points and we're actually activating a release. And when our brain is wired a certain way and we're tapping on certain concepts or topics, our brain gets activated and it gets malleable so we can rewire it and reconnect pathways to the beliefs that we want. And if you want to learn more, you can set up a free coaching call on the link below and I can help you rewire and release some of those old negative money beliefs so that way you can start to scale to the 10K months. So those are the five most common money beliefs that are preventing you from scaling to 10K months. Did any of those resonate with you? And if you want to take your money journey to the next level, consider taking my free assessment. It is discover your money blocks. Which of the four most common money blocks are stopping you or preventing you from hitting those milestones or those successes? So I would definitely take that. It's totally free and it's pretty eye-opening. You can answer the questions and see which money block might be preventing you from truly hitting those 10K months. You are destined for 10K months and you're destined for beyond 10K months. 10K months is a beautiful milestone to achieve and to set. And once you've hit that, we can keep scaling, scaling to 30K months, 50K months, even towards those 80K months, which will make you a million in a year. Again, I'm Alyssa Khan. I'm a money mindset coach. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. And don't forget to subscribe. I release videos out every single week and I cannot wait to help you elevate your money mindset.